we will pull you 50% of the time of the race. Like we'll place you. Keep the arc for a while. See what happens. See if he breaks down. See if the field reacts. If it does, I'll just settle back in. Any questions? Yeah. On my whistle. Judges ready? Good up. Here we are, Tour of St. Louis. This is the Masters 40, 50 plus cat one through four field. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and uh, follow along for the first lap. So that was uh, my teammate who took off from the get go. His name is David Kuntz. There on the right side uh, in the red, white, and blue. That is my other teammate, Scott Rollins. We had four people in this race, and uh, our, our game plan kind of changed up uh, from, the, from the initial start to the starting line uh so we were gonna play it chill uh and then kind of see what see what happens let let some of the other guys uh show their show their cards uh burn a few matches and then try to animate uh and then our boy david coon said hey i'm going to uh i'm just going to send it from the get-go and see what happens so that's kind of what's going on uh he took off and our goal was to uh let let some folks go that we thought would be good for him in the break. So there's a few decent teams, uh, size teams, that is, in this field. Those in the, the white and black that you can see in front of me here. Um, they had a handful of folks. Uh, you're going to see a, a team in black, white, with yellow uh, bands. They, too, had multiple people. Um, the interesting part of this whole thing was uh, Scott Rollins and David Koontz, the guy who's off the front and the guy who's chasing up there, um, they were both in the Omnium. So tactically, our goal was to try to make sure one of those two guys got in the break and, um, and you know, delivered the best result possible. So we were, we were playing not only for the race win, but we were also playing for the Omnium. So you can see here, pretty active on this first lap. Uh, kind of a hilly course uh, as we kind of jump into this. This section here, the, the wind was hitting from right to left. Um, you could really feel it as you came up a little kicker hill. I'll show you where that is. It's sort of on the back side of the course. We'd already gone through that. But crosswind going to kind of a tailwind, and then you loop around. Um, and as you come through the, the start-finish section, it starts becoming more of a, of a crosswind. Um, and so it was, a, it was a really cold day. I've got the temperature up there on the top left. Uh, 35.6, what it's saying, that was not <laughs> how hot it was, or uh, the, what the temp was. Uh, it was substantially cooler than that. Uh, I'm talking a bit more about folks in the race. You can see a couple up, the guy with the Colorado flag jersey. Uh, he's a He was a guy that we were marking, someone we were concerned about for sure. Um, there were some guys that I had raced against uh, over at Sunny King that I knew were strong. Um, he actually ends up getting getting into the breakaway. He's up there in the red and white. Um, here on the left, the Maplewood team, they had they had good numbers, um, so we we were okay with one of them getting into a move. We did not want multiple of them to get into a move. So our goal was to have um, good representation in the break. We did not want to be outnumbered in any break. And so here we are. Koontz is still off the front. Um, it's been a pretty pretty fast lap, actually, a uh, pretty hard, hard lap. We fast forward, and this is kind of where a second move just sort of rolls off the front. So we're eight, eight and a half minutes in. Um, I'm going fast forward here mode so we can kind of get through more stuff. Um, but a guy kind of rolls off the front here. There's some reactions. You can see my teammate Rollins was up there at the front uh, following. And the guy who ends up uh, uh, pushing here over the top um, is going to be the guy in the Colorado jersey. So you can see him kind of sneaking away and then way up in the distance. Uh, that's that's our teammate Koontz. So a second person is now on the move. Um, and the guy in the yellow and pink, that is John Lester. He was a guy who uh, we knew was going to be a threat in the overall. Super strong time trialist. So he was one that we, um, that we wanted to make sure we kept an eye on. And then uh, there's a Texas Roadhouse guy in here as well, uh, Jonathan Jacobs. He was a guy that we also uh, knew uh, were super. Well, was a super strong guy. He's done super well. Here he goes right here. Um, so I wanted to make sure I was marking him anytime he went. Uh, he is a guy who's who's placed like top top three, four, 
possibly even won the uh, you know the Cat One Two time trial before. So he was definitely on our radar. Uh, a lot of super strong guys in this field. Um, in fact, on on Sunday, this is the Saturday race. On Sunday, uh, he uh, it was one of the higher powered um, average power races I've done. So you can see here, um, this team black with the uh, yellow bands is that Maplewood team. Uh, we're in that headwind section that's about to turn to crosswind. And he just gets a little gap. And this guy in the orange, I keep kind of waiting for him to close it. We've got two two up the road now. Uh, so my my teammate, David Kuntz, um, and then uh, Casale, uh, who, was, who was a guy that we were worried about, uh, Carlos Casale out of Colorado. But he was not in the Omnium, so that was to our benefit to have him up there. Um, so that was okay. We had confidence. Um, uh, David Kuntz is up the road, has a really good sprint. So we were pretty confident. Uh, if he was in a breakaway and riding smart, then we were, we were pretty happy with that. Um, I took a peek to my right. I could see my teammate coming up. And as soon as this guy took off, uh, this is uh, James Reed. As soon as he took off, uh, I knew my teammate was coming up already. So I was really hoping he was going to take off. And sure enough, he does. So there's Scott Rollins going across to the move. And so what now? Now there's five people. Uh, the guy in the red and white here, uh, that's Jonathan Jacob with, uh, with Texas Roadhouse. He was one that was a danger man, uh, definitely, for the overall. So we didn't want him in the move. Uh, this guy who sneaks off the front, he doesn't actually end up making it. Um, so the last guy who makes the breakaway uh, was my teammate, Scott. So it ends up with five up the road. Uh, Maplewood with the black and the yellow yellow band, they are represented, so they've got one up there. Um, I knew they were going to be willing to kind of chase things and shut it down, and that's essentially what happens for quite a while. Uh, little gaps for them. I'm kind of hoping that other people are going to close them. Anytime they don't, it's my job to make sure uh, I, I kind of close it down. So I'm happy with the break. We got two of the five people up there. Uh, both of our guys that are in the Omnium uh, overall are up there. So that's a good move for us. Uh, and you can see this takes a little longer to close down than I would have liked. Um, but my goal here was to, to shut things down and try to allow that breakaway to get established. Uh, so here we are. This is kind of the uphill. There's kind of an uphill section. So a fast downhill left into this uphill section, which, which kind of turns into a, a pretty big headwind. So this was by far the, the tougher section of the course. And winds were sustained at probably 15 to 20 plus miles an hour. Uh, a lot of gusting gusting wind was happening as well. Um, there goes an attack, uh, which had Texas Roadhouse, Jonathan Jacob, in it. Um, this guy right in front of me, he so he ends up doing a ton of work. Uh, Benjamin Sharp uh, is his name. <clears throat> he was a guy who I was worried about um, as far as you know being a super – he was a super strong guy. I knew about him. Um, and so obviously was wanting to mark him. This was a spot where I did not want uh, Texas Roadhouse getting up there. So I could have done a lot better job of reacting quicker to some of this stuff uh, rather than having to do these longer, you know, five, six, seven hundred plus watt efforts. Um, so, you know, kind of looking back at this film, it's much easier to uh, to follow a move than it is to to try to bridge across to it. Uh, there is no rear uh, camera, obviously, but. None of those efforts right there were an attempt to to drop the entire pack. Um, more so, my goal was to just make sure that the 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 break was or the secondary break was neutralized. Um, so we end up getting into uh, you can see the the time there in the top left. There ends up being and this uh, Benjamin Sharp here uh, is calling for rotations. Um, there's there was just a lot of time where there was a few people that were working. Uh, Benjamin there with stages. Uh, John Lester who just snuck off the front here. You can see how quickly this happens. Um, not a formal attack. He was just a you know a big engine that kind of rolls off the front. I saw the the Maplewood team there on the front, um, who had a teammate in the break. So um, I was thinking that they were gonna you know do some work to to shut things down, and he just kind of stays he stays up there um, with him with him sort of dangling. So long as there wasn't a ton of attacks, I wasn't overly concerned. We were still we were still maintaining a big gap to the field. Um, so I wasn't overly concerned about trying to shut him down. Um, so I was I was content to have him sort of dangling up there so long as he was solo. Uh, I definitely didn't want there to be big groups of people trying to jump across to him. And then, uh, you know, if there's a strong group, especially one that doesn't have uh, uh, anyone from the, the, the breakaway, any teammates from the breakaway in it, 
then there could be some good cohesion and uh, and a chance of the front move getting pulled back. So definitely did not want that. You can see we're in we're in hypersonic fast fast forward mode. Um, as they're working, I was anytime they opened a gap, I would make sure I followed the wheel. Um, anytime they tried to come in, I was letting them come in. Um, so that's kind of the way you are supposed to to ride in these situations. Um, I know there was a little bit of frustrations when <laughs> when there's a person that's that's taking a pull and they look back and they see, you know, me staring at them. Um, that's that's kind of how you disrupt the flow. But as far as um, the esprit de corps, so to speak, if there's a group working together, you don't place yourself in that and intentionally try to interrupt things. So uh, if, if anyone was trying to come in to keep the rotation going, I was letting them do that. But anytime they were not or if little gaps were open, I was closing it down. So now we've got a second guy that's off the front, and this is not a good situation to be in. Um, the guy in the blue blue here, uh, he was one who'd been super active and shown he was super strong. So I was kind of waiting to see what he was going to do, if he was going to try to close this down or not. Um because I knew he wanted to be in it. And there was also the, sort of the dynamics of this being a 40 slash 50 plus. They were scored different. Payouts were all for, for one race, but they were scored separately. So there was kind of different dynamics going on. And it's always sort of tough to understand what people's motives are when there are two different Omniums happening within the same race. So here I'm looking around and, and that break's going. Um, I could see the the field was a little bit strung out behind me, and no one, you know, they weren't really, no one was really wanting to come close any gaps down. So I decided, hey, I'm going to give this a dig and see if I can get across to this move. I know I did not want uh, another one of the Maplewood guys across, and I also did not want John Lester uh, motivated to go across either, uh, because he was a guy who was a big threat in the Omnium. So. Here I am jumping across. This is a pretty big dig for sure. This is my hardest uh, effort of the race was jumping across to this move. And uh, it was through that kind of head, head slash crosswind section. And I end up tagging on and no one came with me. So when I attacked, um, no one uh, didn't appear as though anyone even tried to, tried to come with. And so, yeah, they, they just settle into a rotation here. Um, so this was kind of where it got a little bit weird. I'm just opening the gap up. I did not want to work to bring, you know, I had two guys up in the move. I did not want to work to bring that back. Um, but then you also get to a point where it's like, okay, if that break is gone, you also don't want to get caught by the group behind you. So it was an interesting situation. I end up doing a couple rolls through where I don't take very hard pulls, uh, but I do rotate through uh, just to show that, that I wasn't going to sit on the entire time. Um, but we end up, uh, the, the breakaway <laughs> ends up uh, kind of coming back a little bit. I was getting time checks, and uh, they were not accurate time checks. So I thought we were safe, and it turns out we were not so safe. Um, and we get near the end, and John here just starts taking a massive, some massive pulls, uh, which you're going to see here shortly. Uh, but you can see I'm just kind of rolling through. Uh, not doing a ton of massive power, um, but also, you know, I was, I was trying to do a little bit within this. And there's only so much talking you can really do uh, <laughs> about this whole thing. Uh, we're going to end up seeing the, the, the front group, and this is where it got uh, interesting on my part. So I have a uh, Scott Rollins and David Kuntz up there. So Kuntz ends up getting up the road with one other. I could kind of see the group splitting apart. Um, we're lapping some riders here, so that got a little bit confusing as well. But we're going to be um, with, with one lap to go. Uh, I'm going to see my teammate who had done quite a bit of work. Uh, Rollins did quite a bit of work for David Kuntz. Um, and I was in a situation where Rollins was coming back. I stopped pulling. I, I stopped doing any work. But I could see Rollins, and I did not want to open a sprint up uh, because I did not want us to catch him. So you can see in the top left there, barely, there's a little, <laughs> there's, a, there's a rider going there. Uh, that's my teammate. So you still have to go around this corner. Uh, there's down a little tiny hill and then up a hill. Um, and he, I could tell, was, was kind of cooked. And I also didn't think he knew we were coming. Um, so right here, I definitely did not want to go 
and uh, from the break, he takes off, and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> there he goes. I gave it a few pedal strokes. Um, I didn't have much much legs. I, I wouldn't have done much anyway, but uh, you can see how close it gets there at the finish line. Uh, so there's Omnium points available there. Scott ends up, my teammate ends up uh, taking it uh, on the line. So he ended up fifth. I ended up seventh. And uh, from the two-man move, what do we got? Carlos. How'd it go? That's a dick move. <laughs> Hell yeah. We got Koontz with the win. So fun day on day one. Uh, ends up after the time trial and after this event, David Koontz was sitting first overall in the Omnium. And I've got video from day two. So if you want to catch that, uh, go ahead and subscribe to this here channel. I'm going to get that posted. Um, or if this is in the future, it may already be posted, in which case you will see it and you're able to click on it right here on this screen. All right, uh, if you like this stuff, please like, subscribe, comment. It takes quite a while to do this, so if y'all like it, I'll keep doing it. If you don't, there's no point in me uh, wasting my time making that happen. So that's all we got. Hope you're having a great day. Peace.